loved him at playing, so at some point you got to think, let, let him play, right? Like, this is, I mean, literally the best player. We lost the game like five times because of the fumble cover flag, so they kept giving him a chance. We were down with 19 seconds left. He scored a touchdown to tie it. Then on the extra point, he makes it. There's a flag. So we get a huge five-yard penalty. We do six again. He misses it. They rough the kicker. Flag. Third chance. He makes it. We win the game. So we beat Augusta Christian last night. So we're, I think, 6-2, I think, in the conference. Yeah. They got a guy who's 6-9. He was a whole head above everybody else in the field. He played defensive line. I've got to imagine he's getting recruited either football or basketball. But he was 6'9". He was enormous. Like, he couldn't – like, I watched him push – like, the offensive lineman took that play. Like, he was just a soft kid. Like, you know, like – I mean, it was insane. He was huge. But, yeah, I, I had heard Augusta Christian was pretty good. After last year, I think we had one win, so it's you know, a new coach, new you know, they're playing a lot better. Actually, that sandwich might hold. I might hold it because there's nothing on it. It may just it may hold for. Stuff on it, you gotta eat it or else it's
night, volleyball fans. Welcome back into the Moore Fitness Center here on campus of the beautiful Columbia International University. We are here for a conference matchup with Truett McConnell visiting Columbia International University. And we're off and running. Joe Pollock, we're excited for some volleyball action today. We're ready for a doubleheader today with CIU getting off to a good start with a block and then a little miscommunication from TMU. I like First. the colors on the court today, Brian. The colors it, look nice. It is a, it's a colorful afternoon here inside of the Moore Fitness Center. Beautiful day outside in Columbia, South Carolina, the, the state capital of South Carolina. And CIU off to a fast start here, up 2-0 after the communication area with t era with TMU in the first point and a solid serve there by number 28, San Herho. She had a fantastic afternoon last Saturday here versus Bryan College, the historic win versus Bryan College as CIU defeated Bryan for the first time in volleyball history. Well, we're off to a 3-0 start, similar to how we started last weekend. Quick starts, good serves. Good block off the quick hit. Tell you, Joe Bollock, the Jesus there, so sneaky with pushing that ball over the net, and she was setting that ball all over the net for variety of positions there. Another great point there by CAU. They lead 4 0 early in the first set. Nice ace. Another ace by San Herho. CIU in the all gold, TMU in the teal. Is that teal? Sky blue, what is that? I'm gonna go sky blue sky there, blue. Joe Pollock. That's not teal. It's good recovery. Reimer very active over there on the right side of the net for CIU. That makes it six to zero. Coming into the day's match, Reimer is the kills leader in the Appalachian Athletic Conference with 406, Joe. 406 kills on the season. Well, we saw a lot of that last weekend when you or I were on the call, and uh, she's obviously a strong player for a reason. Scutchings there, and it's a quick timeout for Truett McConnell, down 7-0 in the first set. We weren't at the, uh, the, the match last night, but CIU took on Columbia, and... Uh, it was a, from what we heard, it was a pretty easy victory for CIU. So they're coming out confident again today with a quick 7-0 lead to start this one. Yeah, unique schedule this week for the CIU Rams being able to take on the Columbia College Koalas, one of our more uh, favorite mascots. The Koalas uh, defeated them on Tuesday, I believe, and then again last night uh, in easy fashion. Uh, to take on, and as we lead up to today's match with Truett McConnell. I do believe, I'm looking up the stats as we speak here, Joe, I believe that CIU held Columbia College to a very low number. I don't want to misquote it um, in their first match. Yeah, it was 25-2 to two in that third set on Tuesday earlier at, uh, at Columbia College. So a dominating performance there for the Rams earlier in the week and then followed up with a 3-0 sweep last night as well. CIU undefeated at home this season. And only one loss in the conference. This is a conference game. San Herho serves again. Nice block by TMU, recovered by CIU. A little bit of a miss set there by number eight. That was Brooklyn Brock. Another error for the Bears. The Rams leading 8-0 San Herho, so it's going to serve again for the Rams. Fans, you know we're live here on YouTube, live broadcasting through the CIU Sports Network. You know how Joe and I like to do it. Let us know where you're tuning in from this afternoon. 
We love to interact with our fans that are joining us here live for CIU Volleyball. That point goes to Truett McConnell. Brooklyn Brock, Brock will serve for the Bears. Our friends, our friends from uh, Krakow, Poland are back oh, watching with us. Love it. Love it. Welcome back in all the way from Krakow, Poland. Bears on the offensive there. Dug out by DeJesus. Wow. That was called in as uh, Reimer put that one down. Freshman Kelsey Mangum will serve for the Rams here. That block attempt there by Morrell and Kleist falls out of bounds. Truett McConnell will serve. Back to serve. That is Volmus. A little bit of a passing error there. Interesting call. Point goes to the Bears. I'm with the CIU coach on this one. I thought the uh, TMU player was over the net interrupting that pass, but not how they saw it. DeJesus with the back set to Reimer there. That combination last weekend was unbelievable. Another point there for the Bears. Volmus will continue to serve. CIU leads 9-4 here early in the first set. A little bit of a floater. That's Abby Kleiss with the kill. Seemed like a little bit of a miss hit there, Joe Pollock, but it, it worked. Yes. It, uh, it floated over the, the block, which is the important part, and the back line was not able to get there. Marrero subs in for Reimer. She will serve with the Rams leading 10 to 4. That was in the net. It was Katie Williams on the attack there for Truett McConnell. But the point goes to the Rams leading 11 to 4. With Marrero to serve again. Both benches into this one early. That was a service error out of bounds, 11-5 CIU. Katie Williams to serve for the Bears. To Jesus to Kleist, what a save there by Katie Williams to keep the Bears into the point. Looks like Kleist was into the net there. Point goes to Truett McConnell. Williams to serve again. I don't know if you noticed, uh, Brian, but we were talking last week about these knee pads. Ooh. Oh, nice kill. Marrero with the kill there. The server for um, TMU. We talked about are they knee pads or are they shin pads, and she definitely has them more shin pads. She has them lower than I've seen most players. That is correct, Joe. <laughs> They're not even on the knee, the bottom of the kneecaps. They are down on the shins. We did notice that last week how times have changed as the serve from Katie Nichols floats out of bounds. Point goes to TMU. Emma Bolin will serve for the Bears. Bears are down 12 to 7. Joe, I tell you, DeJesus makes it look so easy with that back set that time to Morrell for the kill, but unbelievable how easy she makes it look. She does. It doesn't matter where she is on the floor or what direction her body is facing. She's able to do what she wants with it. Carla Couchy will sub in for the Rams and go back to serve. TMU is screaming for a touch there, but no touch called. So that point goes to CIU. That was Jordan Roberts on the attack there.
Catchy serve hits the top of the net. Good block. Double block. Selecki there on the attack for the Bears, but two Rams there for the block, and it's another timeout from head coach Mark Corbin for Truett McConnell. Down 15-7 to seven early. Joe, I, I've got to believe that he's wanting this to stay as close as possible against the high-powered Rams. Yeah, they inched back into it. They were got within uh, five or six points, but then CIU's been able to take a couple more to extend the lead again. I find it interesting. Did you notice that uh, Truett McConnell, when the coach called timeout, the bench players – they went and sprinted across the court and back and then did a set of jumping jacks before they joined the huddle. Okay. I did, uh, I did not notice that. I guess to keep them, uh, keep them going, keep, keep the blood flowing. Keep, keep the bench involved, keep the bench going. Being in coaching for a long time, I do enjoy seeing what other teams and what other coaches do for their warm-ups. And in this case, the in-game warm-up with the jog across the beautiful Moore facility. More fitness center here at Columbia International University. Garth checking in from Saskatchewan, Canada. So we've got Canada and Poland back with I, us today. I feel like we have our regulars. Welcome back, regulars. Helps us feel a whole lot more comfortable. I am curious what the weather is like is uh, in Canada right now and even in Poland. Y'all could let us know what the weather is like here. It's about uh, 70 degrees here in Columbia, South Carolina. On a nice Saturday afternoon as Couchy serving for the Rams, serves it into the net. She'll sub out for Kelsey Mangum. Woke up on Wednesday to 32 degrees with frost on my windshield. And uh, my in-laws in the great state of Maine were saying it was warmer in Maine than it was in South Carolina oh, on really? Wednesday. Now that is rare. 32 degrees in South Carolina. You might as well just shut the state down, Joe. That's right. Yep. It took my car a long time to warm up that morning. <laughs> Davis is subbed into the game. She'll attack from the left side. Ball will sail out of bounds. Point for the Bears. Kaylee McFarland from Brazelton, Georgia, will serve as the Bears trail 15 to 9. That ball will Good sail ball. long. Good communication there by Mangum, as well as Katie Nichols to watch that ball fall out of bounds. Camelia De Jesus now will serve for the Rams. They lead 16 to nine with Reimer subbing back into the game. Oh, what a recovery by TMU. I thought that was down, but Reimer says it is. To Jesus to Reimer. She will most certainly extend her kills lead within the Appalachian Athletic Conference throughout this contest here. Rams leading 17 to nine with the Jesus to serve again. Our favorite um, assistant athletic director. I think that's her title, isn't it? Miss Kim? Kim is, Abbott. Is letting us know that it's 54 degrees in Poland. 54 degrees she in Poland. She must have Googled because she's not, not in Poland. Today. I was going to ask, is, is, is she in Poland right I, now? I do not believe so. I believe um, she's probably over my back shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Davis on the attack from the left side. Great dig that time by Emma Boland for the Bears. Nice. Great kill that by was, TMU. That was Selecki on the attack from the left side. Not much the Rams could do about that one. No, Selecki that will a, serve. Yeah, that was a great that was a great hit. So TMU trying to inch their way back into this one. Not going to do it there. Davis from the right side, and Selecki tries, but that ball almost reached our broadcast booth here, Joe. I, I would have blocked it. I would have saved you, Brian. I, I feel like local rules is if, if we can hit it back into the court, they'll keep playing. Is that right? Is uh, that, if it uh, stays on their side of the court, that's what <laughs> I think it's supposed to be. I would love to see some of that classic Joe Pollock elevation. Hey, I led my conference in blocks in high school, okay? I, I believe it. I believe it. That's Katie Williams on the attack. San Herho can't get a handle on it on the back row. For the Rams, point will go to the Bears. 
The Rams still lead 18 to 11 here in the first set of this conference matchup. So we have a double header for you today, fans. The Rams and the Bears will play this game here. This is a conference matchup as the service error from Brock goes into the net. The game following this one at 3 o'clock will be a non-conference tilt between the Rams and the Bears. So the same two teams will play. One's a conference match and one is not. More unique scheduling here. Rams leading 19 to 11 with Mangum serving. Oh my. Mangum there with the dig from the attack from Williams. Mangum coming into today's match. Wow. The leader in digs in the Appalachian Athletic Conference with 619 digs. That was on display there as she will serve with the Rams leading 20 to 11. That was so impressive. I'm still stuck on that one. They're calling that one out as it hit the uh, antenna. But that the spike was impressive enough. And then Magnum's with, with, uh, with the way she dug that up was just so impressive. Yeah, Mangum is a freshman. She is a seasoned veteran, even as a freshman back there. Again, with 619 kills coming into today's match. And that's why she's wearing the odd color jersey as the libero. It's the defensive specialist. So she is, that's what she's supposed to do. She's there to dig those balls out. Kleist again, sneaky down the line, drops it right in front of the Bears' Brooklyn Brock. But she can't do much about that one. Kleist with another kill. Okay, Brian, trivia question. Uh-oh, I usually miss those. It is four degrees Celsius in Saskatchewan with snow coming tomorrow. Okay. What is four degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? That I don't know. No? Um, those would be one of those things that I'd normally go to Google. I just, um, I just did. Okay. I won't, I won't lie and say I know it. <laughs> it's 39.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. So okay. snow is, uh, I guess so. If that's the high for the day, that's in Saskatchewan. That's, uh, that's what I remember from my days living in Maine. Yeah. That's, uh, and I had to get on my roof and shovel off my roof of all the snow we had <laughs> so it didn't collapse on us. I made a snow angel on my roof one time. Did you really? I did. Oh, no. Marrero with the ace there following the kill from Reimer on the previous point. We have set point here for the Rams with Marrero serving. I want to hear more about this snow angel on the roof. Maybe we can talk about that during the break. Twenty-four twelve. Jump serve coming. Marrero sails it long. That'll make it 24-13 with Truett McConnell to serve, back to serve, number 11, Katie Williams again. Yes, shoveling snow off of the roof, Joe Pollock, mm -hmm. uh, as a born and bred South Carolinian, that's something that I cannot say I've ever done. Okay. Kleist with the kill, the assist from DeJesus. The Rams make quick work of Truett McConnell in the first set here at the Moore Fitness Center in this conference matchup. Yeah, when, in, in, in the great state of Maine, I always tell people it snows from Halloween to Easter. And so most of the time after the first snowstorm, it stays until spring. It doesn't, you know, does, it's not going to warm back up, so it's, it right. stays. And so once you, have one, once you get one storm, let's say it's, I don't know, six inches or whatever, and then you get a second storm a couple days later, that's another three, six inches. You start getting it piling up on your roof, and if you don't go up there and get it off your roof, you could have a roof collapse. And so I used to take my, uh, my ladder and go stand up on top of my roof and shovel it off just like you would shovel your driveway. I would just push the shovel down and plow through. And so one day I went up there, and it, was, it, was, it looked beautiful because it, it hadn't been touched yet, you know. So I decided I'm going to... I'm going to lay down in this. And so on my roof, I laid down, and I did a snow angel and got up and took a picture of it and then decided to shovel it. So. The, the entrepreneur in me feels like there's a business idea, snow angels, roof clearing. Um, <laughs> maybe that would be in uh, somebody's future that's listening here, watching us here live on the CIU Sports Network. And uh, 
the great state of Maine or up into Canada or maybe even into Poland when the snow starts coming down in Poland. It's, um, it's 11 degrees Celsius and raining in Krakow, Poland. Okay, okay. So it's a little warmer in Poland than it is in Saskatchewan. I feel like the extent of my Celsius knowledge is that zero is freezing, so it makes sense to me that uh, Canada was at 39 degrees, and so it'll be a little bit warmer than that in Krakow, Poland. The rain does not surprise me. There's no disrespect to Europe and beautiful does Krakow, it, Poland. Does but, it rain uh, all the time? My experience in Europe is it's typically pretty cloudy and, uh, and typically pretty rainy. Okay. After we called the game last week, I went back and looked at some photos that I took from the roads around Krakow, Poland, and it was it was pretty cloudy. Okay. But a beautiful countryside. Well, our libero, Kelsey Mangum, Mangum her family from – Roughmont, North Carolina is tuning in. We appreciate y'all tuning in. And that, that is a pronunciation that uh, that uh, it baffles me. If it's, if it's, if it's, is it Roughmont? Is it Rougemont? Oh. If we can get a phonetic spelling here <laughs> on our chat. Maybe our friends in uh, Saskatchewan, though, because maybe it's more <laughs> of a C Canadian, French-Canadian type. It could type. be. It could be. Is it R R Rouge? Rougemont? <laughs> Who is we only uh, we're we're at the mercy of the chat on YouTube live. So if you can let us know with a phonetic spelling, that would be great. And if you are just tuning in here on the CIU Sports Network, let us know where you're watching from today. We always love interacting with our fans. A quick look at the stats there after that first set, where CIU defeated Truett McConnell 25 to 13. Kira Reimer with four kills. Abby Kleiss with three. And with one kill each, that would be Marrero, Scutching, Morell, DeJesus, and Davis. Kelsey Mangum added to her conference-leading total of digs with three digs, so she now leads the conference with 622 digs. And Kira Reimer with four kills you now with 410. That. that dig was impressive. Give her two for that. <laughs> we will contact the conference office and see if they can help her out because that was an incredibly athletic play. Coming hello, out to of the the break. hello to the Fernandez family in Chapin, South Carolina, oh. watching. Chapin. Would you consider Chapin a suburb of Columbia? Just a nice, nice area of town. I don't yes. know. DeJesus will open up the second set serving for the Rams. Nice block. De Jesus out to San Jerjo, but it is blocked there by number 21. That is Renavia Neal, the senior out of Lawrenceville, Georgia, checking in at 5'10". I wonder if European soccer got their cheers from women's volleyball or if it's the other way around. Because these girls just don't stop. You know how when you go to a European soccer game, the crowd is singing and chanting and cheering the entire match. The entire contest. And that's what the women's volleyball teams do. The entire time they are dancing, chanting, and cheering on the bench. And not on the bench. They're standing to the next to the bench. I agree with that, Joe, as San Jero there serves the Rams. I look at things like that, and I look at healthy culture, healthy athletic culture in this case, the, the kill there by Katie Williams for TMU. And we talked about it last weekend, but the culture that Amber Haver has created here at Columbia International University with their volleyball program. Started the program four years ago, and last year winning a national championship in the NCCAA. And to your point, to see these girls on the bench that aren't in the game continuously cheering, continuously chanting, continuously dancing and supporting their teammates. It's a, it's a testament to her and her staff and everybody here at CIU as Mangum serves with the Rams tied 2-2 with the Bears. Marrero's parents from Puerto Rico checking in again. Welcome and, back. And not to be outdone, we have some TMU parents from Brazelton. 
Brazelton, paying Georgia. A, paying us a compliment on, oh. on there today. Well, we, we appreciate that. We will send the check in the mail, or is it already in the mail, Joe? It, I can't I, remember. I think I spelled Brazelton wrong, so I don't know that it's going to arrive. But <laughs> <laughs> The block there from Katie Williams for TMU draws the second set even. Three all. As the ball comes onto the the playing surface before Williams to serve. I was looking for, I will say, I was looking for the little kid that was playing with the ball that <laughs> rolled onto the court, but there was none. It was just a stray ball. It was not a kid. I was a little shocked at that. Another point for Truett McConnell. Four three, TMU with the lead. They trailed all of game one. De Jesus to Morrell. Joe, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I would have stepped in front of that one for Morrell. That thing was absolutely moving. I was just going to say, maybe, do you think we could go down and see if we could dig one up after the game? I thought that was part of the deal. Is that yeah. not part of the deal? I would, the? I would love to. Well, probably not, because I'd probably get an imprint of a volleyball on the side of my face. I feel like we could put a helmet on or some sort of, maybe a maybe a football helmet on. We'll check with uh, Coach Haver or the staff down there, Gordy, Scotty. We'll check in and see if we can step in front of some of those some of those hits from these high-powered athletic CIU Rams. There's Morrell there for the block. Another point for the Rams. They edge ahead here in this set number two, five to four. The fans are still walking in here at the Moore Fitness Center. If you haven't been to this facility, you've got to check it out. A great home for CIU volleyball in this case, and also CIU basketball right here in Columbia, South Carolina. So if you're watching us here locally, we encourage you. Come on out. Check it out. It's a great atmosphere here today for volleyball. A very competitive point back and forth. Both teams doing their part on blocks and digs. And TMU was able just to put it over that last block and get it down to tie the game back up at five. There's Emma Boland to serve there. Oh, that was pretty. again. Another kill for Abby Kleist. That was a nice little push because she saw the block was there. So if she had attempted the kill, it probably would have went into the block. And so she was able just to touch it over and put it down in front of the back line. Nichols to serve for the Rams. That is a beautiful set, a bump set to the far side. And Davis puts it down. 7-5 CIU. And that's an ace for Katie Nichols. Makes it 8-5. to five. Brian, you were talking about the culture of the CIU volleyball team. It really shows, too, when you look at the amount of players they have on the bench. You know, a volleyball team, you have six on the court, so maybe you have, most teams would have 10 or 12 players. Mm -hmm. They have, I want to say they have 10 or 12 players on their bench. And that just goes to show the culture of these girls want to be involved. They see that it's something great here at CIU. They won a national title last year. They want to be involved in something. And this is, it's a lot of fun to see that many people on a, on a team may not get in the game, but they're still very active and involved. We all know how active Coach Haver is on the recruiting trail and how active the entire program is on social media. And so you're right, Joe, as Morrell with another kill for the Rams. There are a lot of young ladies around this country and around the world even that are clamoring to be able to play volleyball for Coach Amber Haver and come to, again, a great university like Columbia International University. And again, what's not to love? These girls consistently have the highest team GPA within this athletic department. And, of course, you know CIU is a faith-based school. 
teaching all of those great things, character, spirituality, and beyond. As number 23, that's Sonia Selecki with the attack from the left side. Beautiful kill. We talked about it last week. I, I must have missed the invitation. The, the new multi-million dollar business and IT center that opened as well as the new dining hall. Maybe, maybe we can sneak in the dining hall after this one here. It's a double header, so we might have a little bit of time to run over there. Maybe they got, I hope they have a good ice cream machine. I'm sure, I'm sure they do, Joe Pollock. The Jesus to serve as the Rams leading 11 to 7. Reimer with the attack. It's not able to be handled that time by Selecki on the back row. Another point for Columbia International University. I believe that's a five-point run, and so TMU is going to call a timeout. Coach Corbin again with a timeout, and then you're right, Joe. Those Bears just jogging across the floor, Yeah. and here come the jumping jacks. So they, they have a routine. If, it, if their team calls a timeout, bench players got to go warm up. I'm feeling like, Joe, maybe next time that uh, there's a timeout call that you and I run out there and join them. I'm sure. No, but we'll just do it up here in our broadcast booth. Yeah. And do our uh, do our jumping jacks. It's too much work to go down there. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the stats here, Reimer leading the Rams again. It's no surprise with six kills, but Abby Kleiss with five kills. Joe, the thing that has shocked me or uh, struck me today with the kills from Abby Kleist is – they haven't been extremely powerful. They've been very crafty, and she's pushed them down the line. She's really shown up here today. Yeah, so far, CIU playing well. TMU has um, – their hit percentage is not very high right now, uh, and so they're not able to get their, their hits down, whether that's CIU digging them up or they're hitting them out of bounds. So far, they just haven't been able to uh, produce the points off those hits that they're looking for. So this game, much better than game one for TMU. The Jesus to serve out of the timeout. Rams leading 12 to seven. Selecki receives it and sends it over. The Jesus to Reimer, but it's handled in the back row that time by Truett McConnell, that was Emma Boland on the dig, gets it over to Katie Williams for the kill. And that's exactly what we were just speaking of. She wanted to, they finally got the opportunity for that kill over the double block and she was able to put it down. They hadn't been, have not been very successful in doing that so far today, but had that opportunity there to break that 5-0 run for CM, CIU. It's a nice way to come out of the timeout there for the Bears to stop that CIU run. To Jesus with the back set to Davis. A little bit of confusion there with the Bears. Selecki with a great, great dig there off of Reimer. That's three digs in a row for Selecki. Maybe it's the shin pads. It might be. And she is getting her money's worth <laughs> today. What a point here, Joe Pollock. And that one may have been touched at the line, but it doesn't matter. It was still in. So That was Leah Bolin Bowen from the right side for the Bears. Puts that one down. That's two in a row for TMU. Rams still lead 12-9 here in set number two of this first of a doubleheader with this one being the conference matchup and Davis from the right side. Let's feel like that one was curving right through to hit the floor on the other side. It's point for the Rams. Well, last Saturday when, Brian, you and I called the game against Brian, we noticed during the rotations for CIU that when Reimer was on the bench, they, they struggled to get the consistent points that they were getting when she was in. Today, we're not seeing that that trend. 
Um, no matter the rotation, CIU is able to stay competitive on the floor, which is obviously what you want, right? Even with an, a star player like Reimer, you still you still need to be able to give her a break and continue to score points. That's right. So today they're able to do that, whereas they struggled to do that a little bit last week, even with the upset win. And to your point, so far the stat sheet reflects that with Reimer with now her seventh kill. But with Kleist with five, Davis with four, Morrell with three kills as the supporting cast for Reimer. Sanjurjo will serve again with the Rams leading 15 to nine. Oh. That one hits the line. Top spin on that one, Joe Pollock. That was another a ace. That was a beauty. What, the, I guess that's what uh, the, the bench was chanting there, huh? I didn't know what they were chanting, but I think they were saying San Her Ho. San Her, is that what they're? I think they were chanting her name. We will uh, we will check with our production truck on that one. Man, if, if I if I only knew where all these people were, Brian, that you keep saying we're checking with, <laughs> I didn't realize our staff was so enormous. <laughs> well, we appreciate the help uh, from Alex and Corbin today working with us on the CIU Sports Network. That one sails out of bounds. Point for TMU. Uh, I did just get a halftime update. Do you want a halftime, a college football halftime update, Brian? Uh, I'm sh why not? Sure. If it's, if it's in the chat, as Kleiss sends another one down, her sixth kill of the day. This one's not in the chat. It just came across my phone, though. Oh. It's uh, undefeated Syracuse versus undefeated Clemson. Oh, okay. And Syracuse is up 21 to 10 at half. Wow, okay. That's a – for friends in South Carolina, that's a big game. It is a big game. As Mangum serves, and it hits the line. Line judge right there to put his flag down, signifying that ball was in. Yeah, TMU is shaking their heads on that one. They are not agreeing. We don't have instant replay here today. So the Rams will take the point. And as that attack from number seven, Jordan Roberts sails out of bounds, that makes it 19 to 11. And a timeout. Okay, there you go. From They're Mark running. Corbin. I'm gonna go ahead and get my jumping jacks in, Joe. If you, if you, if you're sorry, if you're confused on what we're saying, uh, if you didn't join us for set one, whenever TM, whenever there's a timeout on the floor, TMU, the players from their bench, they go and they jog a lap basically, and then they come back and do some jumping jacks before they can join the huddle. So I just, we're just commenting on it, it's a unique, it's a unique thing. It I is. haven't seen that before, but I guess it keeps them active, right? It does. It does. Yeah, it, it is always cool to see what different teams and different programs are doing. But right now, whatever CIU is doing is working as they lead in set number two, 19 to 11 over the Truett McConnell Bears. And looking at body language right now, the Rams feeling pretty confident and the Bears trying to figure out what they can do to see if they can turn the tide in this match. CIU on a 12-4 run after TMU kept it close for the first half of this, of this game. It was tied at 7 at one point, now 19-11. Mangum, the freshman, I'm just going to say from Person High School because I'm afraid of that. <laughs> Is it Rougemont, North Carolina? I don't want to mispronounce it, even though I probably just did. She'll serve it. It's the top of the net. Uh-oh. Selecki digs set. it out. But what was the call there, Joe Pollock? Uh, double hit on the set. There are two hands uh, need to be touching the ball at the same time. When it comes off the set, it should not spin. And if it does, it should spin over, not the ball should rotate forward, not sideways. Once the ball comes off the hands, if it rotates sideways, the referee, even if he didn't see the set, could pretty much blow the whistle because if the ball is rotating sideways, it means your hands did not touch it together. 
Jordan Roberts with the kill. That one didn't spin sideways. He just went straight down, as did that one from number 11, Kira Reimer with her eighth kill on the day. She will sub out as Melissa Campos Soto will enter the game to serve for Columbia International University, leading 21 to 12 here in set number two. It's interesting how volleyball continues to change over the years. I was speaking with a volleyball official just this past week, and he was telling me, oh, another whistle I hear. He's calling TMU in the net, I guess. But he was speaking about how at the, co at the officials' meetings, they were discussing getting rid of a double hit call. Really? Saying that it doesn't benefit or take away from either team if they double hit. There's no advantage gained is what he said. And I, personally, I think that's terrible. Like, let's teach the game properly. Yeah. Make them not double hit it. If they do, it should be called. But he, he was saying that there was some push to get rid of a double hit call in volleyball. Campo Soto with the service error. And now the uh, hitting error. That'll make it 22 to 14, Rams leading here in set number two. Emma Bolin to serve again for the Bears. Good Mangan pass. is so crafty. And speaking of crafty, De Jesus to Kleist sneaks it down the net this time for her seventh kill of the day. She'll sub out with Katie Nichols coming back in, serving up 23 to 14 for CIU. Morell makes quick work. The passing error that time from the Bears. That was Madison Dunn not quite able to handle that serve from Katie Nichols, who will serve for the set here for the Rams. Up 24-14. Great dig that time. Emma Boland for the Bears. De Jesus Morell sails long. Oh, they caught a touch. But we call, we do have a touch. They caught a touch. See how you gets the point and point. the set. So set number two goes to Columbia International University. Two games to none, best of five. We'll do this twice today. And Joe, it's pretty fast volleyball action here with 19, 20 minutes elapsing here in real time and the Rams leading two to zero. Focused. Focused intensity from the Rams here early on. Well, 25-13 and 25-14 victory so far to take the 2-0 lead. And again, looking at the volleyball standings in the Appalachian Athletic Conference, Brian still leading by winning percentage at 17-1, CIU at 15-1. But, of course, with that historic win last weekend, CIU has the head-to-head -head over Bryan College. In third place right now, checking in will be Bluefield at 14-3, Reinhardt at 12-3, and, and Milligan at 11-6. And in spot number five, and Truett McConnell in sixth place at 9-6 with a winning percentage of 600. CIU 25-7 on the season. I'd have to go back and look to see how this uh, record compares to the national championship season a year ago. But obviously CIU having a great season and last Saturday's win over number one Bryan was a big part of that. Let's catch you up on the stats. And if you want to follow along with these stats, we again, just first class folks here at CIU have Gordy Frierson down there doing our live stats. If you go to CIURams.com and make your way over to volleyball and the schedule, you can follow along with the live stats as we are commentating on those live stats. But a quick check of the stats. Joe, no surprise, Kira Reimer with eight kills. Yes, she continues to lead the way. Kleist with seven, Morell with five, and Davis with four. And that's how it's been all season. 
to Jesus with 24 assists and and then Magum. Uh, I always want to call her Magnum, but mm -hmm. it's not Magnum. It's not. It's, it's, it's not. Mangum. Uh, but she has six digs so far, leading the conference in digs and uh, wearing the white jersey to show that she is that defensive specialist. I believe that'll take her to 412 digs on the season, leading the Appalachian Athletic Conference. And the thing that strikes me is the hitting percentage today. Morell, five for five, five kills on five attacks. Marrero, one for one, as well as De Jesus one for one. But batting a 1,000, that's pretty good. Yeah. I don't think uh, Coach can say anything to that. Uh, TMU did better in set number two. They were able to get some hits, not make as many service errors. But percentage-wise, they're still lower than they'd like to be. Leading the Bears with five kills each, that's Leah Bowen and Katie Williams. And checking in with two kills are Jordan Roberts and Sonia Selecki. for Truett McConnell. So we're ready to start set three, best of five. This is the conference matchup. Our second match this afternoon against the same two teams, but that will not count as a conference game. It'll just count on the overall record. The referee taking some time with the captains to discuss something that obviously is being argued by the coaches. Now, I'm not sure, Joe Pollock, but I do know that today is the last Saturday for the South Carolina State Fair. We talked about that mm -hmm. last weekend. I don't know. I can't confirm and I can't deny it, but maybe they were talking about what they will be doing later this evening, what rides they will be getting on at the South Carolina State Fair. Again, I can't confirm nor deny that. But as we start set number three, Truett McConnell will serve San Herho with the attack from the right side as we get this third set started. Scutchings from De Jesus, the athletic play moving to her right kill for Marty Scutchings. It's her second on the day. Blocked out of bounds. So CIU goes back to serve. San Herho with the heat, but Bolin is there. Boom. Blocked that time from Reimer and Scutchings. 2 0 to start set number three. San Herho to serve again. Still amazed at the amount of top spin on the serve coming off of the hand of San Herho. Too much there. Or not enough, I guess. It went uh, long. Alana, I obviously jinxed you. My apologies. <laughs> Announcers jinx. We Sir. are the worst people in the world. The serve goes out of bounds. Brooklyn Brock will serve for Truett McConnell. So they trail two to one early in set number three. Oh. Reimer. She's just put a roof on that net. Nothing gets past it. Morell checking back into the game. This front line here for CIU, Joe Reimer has nine kills, Kleist with seven, and Morell with five. So this is their most productive lineup in that front line today. Well, and it's not just on kills. As you've seen here, they've already gotten two touches on the block in this one point. De Jesus has her choice. This time she feeds Reimer because why not? Let's give her kill number 10. That makes it 4-1 to one CIU with Mangum to serve again. But Navia Neal can't quite handle that set from Brooklyn Brock. Falls on the bare side of the net, making it 5-1 to one. CIU. Coach Haver letting Kelsey Mangum know where she wants her to serve it. Selecki handles it. 
And that one was out. Sets it outside to Leah Bowen, but it sails just out of bounds. Another point for CIU. 6-1 lead. This could be the third and final set. It's a best of five. Morell and Reimer were there for the block, but they can't quite handle it. It was Katie Williams on the attack. Point for the Bears. Daomi Valmas will serve for Truett McConnell. Now, she has teal shoes, though, correct? I would call that teal, Joe okay. Pollock, yes. Their uniforms are not teal, but the sh those shoes are teal. Gotcha. Okay. Rams into the net. Point for Truett McConnell. Valmas with those teal shoes will serve. Mm -hmm. The Bears down 6-3. to three. Actually, a number of TMU players have teal on some port, uh, portion of their shoes. Williams with the attack and the kill makes it 6-4 to four, CIU. Oh. Bulmas. Puts it into the net there for Truett McConnell. Point for CIU. As Marrero will sub in and serve, she checks in for Reimer. Now last weekend when we were here, good Joe, Coach Haber went with the boots. Today with a, a stylish sandal. I would call that a sandal. Yeah, uh, she, she is, she's dressed for success today. All, always very well dressed. Sets the tone, as we've talked about, about the culture within this program. Marrero from the back row. Oh. Mangum to Kleist. It's blocked, but it falls out of bounds. That was Leah Bowen there. But she can't quite direct it back onto the CIU side. Katie Nichols into the game, and she will serve for CIU. Davis crushed that ball. What an athletic play there, Joe Pollock. She was having, had to reach back for that one, but was able to direct it straight down. Unbelievable play there from Hadassah Davis. Yeah, when you can reach back that far, you're going to – if they dig it out, it's going to be pure luck. You're just putting your hands out there because she just crushed that ball. Service error from Katie Nichols. Oh, Brian Beyer checking in on the chat. Brian is our horn blower, uh, not horn. It's not a horn. What is it called? The ram, the, the oh, ram noise thing. Goodness, I. Uh, but he's the he's he's the guy who always has that. Right. But he's not here today, so he's he's checking in online. I hope he's blowing that horn from his living room. Brian, no pressure, but we we would uh, we would expect that that horn is being blown from wherever you're tuning in. Again, here on the CIU Sports Network, block there from Morell and uh, Jesus makes it ten to six for the Rams, but. Again, if you're checking in with us, watching us live, let us know where you are and if you are blowing a ram horn <laughs> in this case. It's a shofar. Or he's screaming shofar. I don't know which one. It, it's, it, it, that's what it's called, or he's just screaming it, but it's okay. a shofar. <laughs> okay. Scutchings there. She punches it over. Another kill for the Rams. Makes it 11 to 6. That's Dayton Valance back to serve for the Rams. And that one falls on the CIU side. So a point, point for Truett McConnell. Make it 11 to 7. As number six, Kaylee McFarlane out of Brazelton, Georgia. I believe, Joe, we had Brazelton checking in on the broadcast. Mm -hmm. 
So Kaylee, the freshman, the 5'6 freshman, sends it over. Mangum handled it, handles it, but puts it back on the TMU side. Marrero from the Ooh. back row. That was in. Places it right in the corner, right in front of Coach Mark Corbin. We've got pink shoes replacing red shoes. And then they both come out. That's the part of the libero that I'll never understand. Uh, yes, the yes. libero can run on and off the court at any time without having to check in. De Jesus, that ball hits the net, climbs the net, and it falls on the TMU side. Another ace for Camelia De Jesus. Rams leading 13 to 7. Emma Bolin handles that one from oh, De Jesus. Davis with a big but block. But Selecki sends it right into the hands of Davis and Scutchings. Another block for the Rams. Okay. And we have a timeout. Can you can you grab the girls running? I want to show. Uh, we I have. See, this is what happens during the timeouts. So now they're going to do jumping jacks. See? So this is what the bench this is what the bench does for TMU. Every time there's a timeout, they they run across the court and back and then do a bunch of jumping jacks. I kind of like that. I like it too. I haven't Joe seen Bob. it before during the. I've seen obviously uh, practices and things like that. But yeah. And we appreciate the, the work in the truck by Alex and Corbin to show us that action here on the CIU Sports Network. DJ Scotty Grigsby playing the Latin music here in the Moore Fitness Center. You never know what you're going to get with Scotty Grigsby when it comes to his music selection. But he, I'll be honest with you, Joe, he's always on point. Yeah, well, you, you know, you got a wide variety of people that are here, so you have to have mix up the you got to mix up the style of music that you have every time. Ryan was just up dancing. You were yelling at me for dancing last I, week, and now you were just up dancing. So he's 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 got you going. I can't I I can't deny it. There are certain things that get me up and moving, and this kind of music it's is one of those things. We mentioned the social media presence for CIU volleyball. You must check them out on Instagram if you are not doing that already, at CIU Volleyball. 6,336 followers. Are you kidding me? For the CIU National Champions from 2021 from the NCCAA. Coming out of the timeout, Rams leading 14-7 to, to Jesus with the serve and the ace not able to be handled that time by Emma Boland. That was a tough ball, Joe. Yes, it was. And she had her hands up, but not quick enough, so it ricocheted off the hands out of bounds. It's a good pass. Good set. And good spike. Really good ex ex execution there, Brock. To Neal after Boland handled that serve so very well. Sonia Selecki to serve for the Bears. They trail 15 to 8 here in set number three of match number one. Scutchings with the attack. That is now her fourth kill. And we'll make it 16 to 8 as we have more substitutions for the Rams. Mm hmm. Davis and Nichols will exit the game. San Herho checks in, and she will serve it for the Rams up 16-8. to eight. Though she is usually one of the first to serve here for the Rams coming out beginning of each set. DeJesus handles it over to Reimer. To Jesus, to Abby Kleist, the ninth time Kleist is sending it down. Rams lead 17 to eight. Jump serve from San Herho. And that's a great smoke. Spike. Smoke Williams. from Katie Williams, goodness. Brooklyn Brock will serve it for the Truett McConnell Bears. They trail 17 to nine.
Oh, a great double block by CIU. The TMU sticks with it. And they get a chance here. Another block. Katie Williams from the left side after an incredible point from both sides there. She sends it down 17 to 10 now. Bears trailing. The defense has come to play for CIU, getting their hands on a lot of these balls. Mangum to Reimer, not able to be handled by TMU. And more substitutions here for the Rams. Morrell checking back into the game. Scutchings and Balance will exit. Mangum to serve. Oh. That was Neal there on the kill. Twice to Morrell, not able to quite come together for the block. Point for the Bears. Morrell and Scutcheons, both seniors from Saskatchewan. It's always neat to look through the roster and see the wide variety of places that players come from and are still able to gel together as a unit. Last year winning a national title, this year trying to repeat. And from what I've seen, Joe Pollock, they have the makeup to really make some noise with another kill there for the Rams. That was Deoma De De Valmas really kept TMU in that point. She was diving all over the place. But another kill for Reimer as Marrero checks in for her, and she will serve it up as the Rams lead 19 to 11 here in set number three. That's a beauty. Leah Bowen from the left side. What a beautiful hit. Her sixth kill on the day as Katie Williams will serve for TMU. And her hoe just keeping it in play so nonchalantly, just that left hand. Wow. Look at Kelsey Mangum. What an effort. Not able to save the point. Love that kind of hustle. Girls diving all over the floor. Even if they don't think they can get there, they're still going to put the effort in. That's a point for Truett McConnell. It's a couple of passing errors there for CIU. Sends it back over. Truett McConnell making a run here, down 19 to 14 in set number three. Marrero from the back Ooh. row sends it just long. Williams will serve it again. They pull within four points. I was very close on that end line, but the referee's been there all day. Morrell is not able to be handled by Katie Williams. Another kill for Judea Morrell. Kleiston Sanherho will sub out of the game. Katie Nichols back to serve for CIU up 20 to 15 here in set number three. They're gonna say that was a block, so the play continues. Nice dig by TMU. Look at Kelsey Mangum. Marrero sends it over. Oh! Morrell sneaks it over. She is now seven out of nine. Twenty-one fifteen. CIU leading. Let's 
Selecki blocked that time by De Jesus and Morrell. Davis gets a hand on that one, but Leah Bowen too much on that one. Kill for TMU. Jordan Roberts for TMU was kept getting in the way of the setter, so she was laughing through that entire point because every time the setter would run to go get it, she was in the way. And then so she would try to run out of the way and then the setter would have to run over there. And it was, it was interesting to watch her react as she's laughing as they're trying to get through that point. Look at Kelsey Mangum again, keeping CIU alive. Selecki down the line though. Emma Bolin will serve I, it again. I can't imagine being a freshman on the court making these type of plays with a bunch of juniors and seniors. I mean, she is just everywhere on defense. Jordan Roberts that time for Truett McConnell. That is her sixth kill on the day. As Emma Bolin will serve it again, Rams leading but now 21 to 18. To Jesus to Davis, it's handled by Williams, but Morrell and to Jesus there to put it down. Valanche and Scutchings back in for the Rams. Valanche will serve it. All the way from Papillon, Nebraska. Again, she's not in Nebraska. She's just from Nebraska Southeast <laughs> Community College. Twenty-two, eighteen. TMU sticking with it. This this set as they continue to claw their way. Davis, an incredible vertical leap from Hadassah Davis. She puts it down. Not much the Bears could do about that one, Joe. No, and extends the lead to now five with just two points left for CIU to take the match. The attack from number seven, Jordan Roberts, falls out of bounds. Valance will serve for the set, but not before. A timeout from Mark Corbin and his staff. Anything can happen, Joe Pollock, but it looks like the CIU Rams are in control yes, of this match. It does. I mean, this is this is the closest one of the three so far on the sets. TMU is, is not giving up. They're sticking with it. They're fighting. They're clawing their way. But the CIU is just, well, I think, too much. So it's a best of five. This is match point for this one. And as we said earlier, there is a this is a double header. These two teams will play again. Scheduled start for three o'clock. That will not be a conference matchup as this this one is. Quick look at the stats. Katie Williams has really, really stepped up her game here in set number three. She now has nine kills for the Bears. Leah Bowen with eight. Jordan Roberts. With six, leading the Rams, Kira Reimer with 12 kills. Abby Kleiss with nine. Jadea Morrell with seven. Davis and Scutchings with six and four, respectively. Dayton Valance, the junior, will serve for the match. The Rams leading 24 to 18. The Jesus to Morrell, but it sails just long. Marrero knew it. She is talking to Coach Haver. It's like she knew she needed to snap her hand down just a little bit more. The Bears to serve. That is Kaylee McFarlane. Davis, goodness gracious, that will do it in this first of two. But like you just mentioned, Joe Pollock, this was the one 
that counted in the conference record. So that takes CIU after that victory over Truett McConnell to 16-1 in the conference. Truett McConnell drops to 9-7. And so they'll get a little bit of a breather, warm back up, and we'll do it again. 47 minutes. The Columbia International University Rams Dispatch of the Truett McConnell Bears. 25 to 13, 25 to 14, and 25 to 19 in set number three. If Brian Byers was here, he would be blowing the chauffeur. <laughs> chauffeur. <laughs> but instead, he's putting uh, icons on the. Uh, chat feature of maybe him doing that. We will, we will take those icons. We will take those emojis. <laughs> it looks like the coaches are talking, trying to figure out when we're going to start this next match. Once we figure that out, we will come back to you. We will let you know, and then we will sign off. But we're going to stay with you until we have some clarity on when this next, next match will start. Looks like they have put 25 minutes on the clock and started it as both teams are meeting. The athletic staff here at CIU are chatting. And as while we figure it out, we'll make a final run of the stats here. Kira Reimer finishes with 12 kills. Abby Kleist with nine. Uh, yes. Jadea Morrell and Hadassah Davis with seven kills each. And for Truett McConnell, Katie Williams led that effort with nine kills. Leah Bowen with eight. Jordan Roberts with six. We have an on-court ceremony. Kira Reimer is being recognized here at the Moore Fitness Center. She is being recognized, Joe Pollock, for 1,000 kills, and she is officially leading the CIU program. Only a junior out of China Grove, North Carolina. What a special moment there, Joe Pollock. Yeah, especially, like you said, she's a junior. She, she just, she's the first player to ever record 1,000 kills at CIU. And she will continue to build on that over the next year. And next being recognized is Camelia DeJesus, recognized for 2,500 sets. The first player to do that in CIU history. Two incredible players. We joked about it last weekend that there needs to be a T-shirt made to Jesus to Reimer. But what a great honor. What great honors for both Kira Reimer and Camelia de Jesus. They have put 30 minutes on the clock. So it looks like approximately 2.50. 2.50 Eastern. We will be back for the second match. Well, folks, we're going to take a break. Joe Pollock, this is Brian Rosefield. We'll be back with you in about 28 minutes and 57 seconds.
right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into the Moore Fitness Center for match number two. Here as CIU will take on Truett McConnell for a second time this afternoon. The first match, CIU swept Truett McConnell by a score of 25-13, 25-14, and 25-19. That was the conference match. This match here will be a non-conference tilt. Again, that moves CIU to 16-1. and one. They are in the lead in the Appalachian Athletic Conference, followed by Bryan College, Bluefield, and Truett McConnell dropped a 9-7 and seven after that one. Joe Pollock, how was your break, Joe Pollock? I'm having a, a glimpse of deja vu. <laughs> As am I. I had a cookie, a chocolate chip cookie. That was good. How was it? It was pretty good. Well, that's great, Joe yeah. Pollock. Emma Bolin starts things off here serving for Truett McConnell. And CIU picks up where they left off with the kill for the Rams. Rams leading 1-0. to zero. Alana Sanherho will serve for the Rams here in set number one, match number two Ooh. here in Columbia, South Carolina. That was number 20, Katie Williamson on the attack. Point for the Bears. She blocked it, but she blocked it into the antenna, and that antenna is out of bounds. So it goes back to TMU. Have some lineup changes here for the TMU Bears. Madison Dunn serving for Truett McConnell. Reimer again with another kill. Rams leading 2-1 to one here. Kelsey Mangum to serve for CIU. Again, if you're tuning in with us on the CIU Sports Network, let us know if you are watching or where you are watching, where you are tuning in from. We love to interact with you, chat with you a little bit through the comments on YouTube. Sanherjo again with an athletic left hand, keeps it in play. Reimer sends it over. And that That's ball in. hits the line from Katie Williamson. I'm watching number one, Leah Bowen, who is actually subbing out right now. For the last point or two, I noticed that she was limping. Uh, while she was still going up to block, she was still doing everything she was needed to do, but there definitely was a limp that she had going on. So she I don't know if she's subbing out because of that limp or if that was just her rotation, but we'll keep an eye on that. Rachel Kessler serves it and receives the dig for TMU. Reimer again. That ball is called in. Another kill for the junior, Kira Reimer, who was recognized between games for 1,000 kills and being the all-time leader in CIU volleyball history. The junior from China Grove just continues to get it done. She is going to continue to build on that, uh, that mark as she's only a junior. And we still have, you know, quite a few games left this season and all of next year, so she will have a significant advantage there when, when you look at the end of her career and how much or how many she continues to get. Macy Boggs in to serve for the Bears. But it's a young program. There's a lot of records to be set and a lot of records to be broken. Point for TMU there. Boggs a sophomore out of Cleveland, Georgia. She'll serve as the Rams and the Bears are knotted at three apiece here in the first set. Good dig. That was the Jesus to Morrell. And that's the Jesus to Abby Kleist. She picks up where she left off in that first game. Rams now leading 5-2-3. Excuse me, 5-4. That's just a tough... It's just tough for um, Truett McConnell when, you know, they're defending well, but by the time the ball gets back up, CIU is ready to hit it back down, and so TMU is not having much offense as they just continue to play defense, play defense, play defense. 
That attack that time was Jordan Roberts, but it sails out of bounds. Katie Nichols will serve again for CIU. Rams leading early in set number one. Boom. Adasa Davis. She's having a good day with some of these hits she's had have been straight down. Davis with seven kills in game number one. Getting an early start here in game number two. That's an ace for Katie Nichols. Rams up seven to four. Davis again, we have a whistle, it looks like, into the net. Truett McConnell. See, they're not able to mount much of an offensive attack. TMU isn't. They're playing defense. Coach having to call timeout here is CIU going on a 6-0 run. Quick set there from DeJesus to Morrell. Morrell puts it down. Morrell in game number one was, dare I say, unstoppable. Seven kills on nine attempts for the senior out of Saskatchewan. And as we learned earlier, Joe Pollock, it is a little chillier in Saskatchewan right now. What do I remember was that? Uh, it was, uh, what, three degrees Celsius and degrees 30, Celsius. 35, something like that Fahrenheit. It's, you know, when you live there, though, that's not cold. That's like a spring day. Um, Joe Pollock, I don't know how to respond to comments such as that uh, because. I remember when I lived in Maine, which uh, a buddy of mine lived in Alaska, and he told me that the weather was very similar. You know, not, not the sun, hours of sunlight are different and stuff, but, like, the temperature was very similar from Alaska to Maine. And it was funny how on fall or spring days, when the temperature got to be, like, 45 after a long winter of being below freezing, it, you go out and the sun's shining, it's 45, and people are like, hey, let's take off the sweatshirt, <laughs> put on the shorts. People in the south think you're crazy. But it feels really warm after you've been at zero degrees for the last three months. Yeah, that's right. People in the South will think you're crazy. They might not say it, but... Uh, no, they'll say it. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> Rams <laughs> leading 9-4. to four. And again, Hadassah Davis. She finds it and puts the Rams up 10-4. to four. Coach Haver letting Katie Nichols know where she wants her to serve it. Oh, that was Rachel Kessler there on the attempt, but puts it into the net. Rams leading 11 to 4. Yeah, it's it's been that they've struggled to attack TMU. There's a good one. Oh, and it gets down. That's a good one. But they haven't had many of those opportunities so far in this match, where. They've been playing so much defense, trying to dig the ball out, and there's been a lot of free balls instead of being able to hammer it. Except right there you see it, and it breaks the 7-0 run for CIU. That was Katie Williams with the kill there. Back to serve, Kaylee McFarland. Morrell sends it just long in front of the Truett McConnell bench. Rams lead. <laughs> I think uh, I think Morell just whispered to her teammate that was really bad because <laughs> she hit it high. So for her, that was really bad. You know, she's been hitting it down, but like that. Adasa Davis again from the left side. I need to check the floor if there's a trampoline down there because she is absolutely skying here on a Saturday afternoon at Moore Fitness Center. Lexabel Rojas, a sophomore out of Puerto Rico, in to serve for the Rams. There you go. Truett McConnell 
has a hard time handling that serve, sends it back over. And to Jesus the getting up there. Side. Rojas to serve again with the Rams leading 13 to six. Oh, that's a good cross. She cut that ball well. Man, Davis is getting up there this set. Hadassah Davis. Look out below. Mark oh, Corbin. He, he is not happy. Coming out and he is luring not happy. his team to get in front of Hadassah Davis's hits. It's a timeout, Truett McConnell. Interesting. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure who he's yelling at. He's yelling at somebody with, with his back turned, whether it's the referees or CIU, but he is not happy with what's happening on the court. While we have a timeout, I do want to say good luck. Congratulations to the CIU eSports team. They're playing in a national tournament today. Well, good luck when to I, the CIU eSports team. When I was in school, when I played video games, like, that was not good. It was, it was bad of me to be playing video, <laughs> being inside playing video games. Now you get scholarships and millions of dollars to play. Absolutely. That eSports roster, again, is available at CIURams.com. It is a roster full, full of folks. We have South Carolina representative, Florida, California, Tennessee, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, New York. Good luck to the guys. Their interim head coach is DJ Scotty Grigsby. Good luck to the guys today. As we come back to volleyball action here, Rojas to serve again as the Rams lead 14 to six. Off her head. That was a good block with your head. Look at that. Now that one's off her elbow. Oh, oh, man. Katie Williams drops it right in front of Campo Sotos. Substitutions. Mangum back into the game for Lexabel Rojas. Serving for the Bears will be Sonia Selecki. Mangum handles it. Nice. Gets it to DeJesus and Marty Scutchings right from the middle. And here comes Kira Reimer back into the game. A potent front line here for the Rams, Joe Pollock. Well, and Davis has been just having a great game. So they haven't missed anything with Reimer being out for the last couple of plays. She comes in and she makes a mark right there, but Davis has been very impressive so far. Mark Corbin steps up and is giving his girls direction after that attack as the Rams lead at 16 to seven. The Jesus sails it long. More substitutions for Truett McConnell. Emma Bolin, the freshman from League City, Texas, will be serving for the Bears. Short set from DeJesus to Reimer is handled by TMU. Nice. Reimer again. Substitutions for CIU. Sanherjo Kleist in the game for Davis and Nichols. Sanherjo back to serve for Columbia International University, leading 17-8 in the first set of game two. And again, if you're just joining us, this is the non-conference matchup between TMU and CIU. CIU took care Ooh. of business in game number one in three straight sets. As that one falls just out of bounds, Joe Pollock. It was a good cut. She cut it all the way across the court, but when it rolled on the net, it rolled out of bounds. 
Sam Herho to serve again. Handled by Williamson over to Neal for the kill. She puts it down. I'm still trying to decide if the TMU coach is frustrated with his players or frustrated with somebody else because he is still pretty fired up on the sideline. And Herho all over the place on the back row. Wow. Over to Reimers, not able to be handled. Another point for CIU as Morrell enters the game. So that front line of Morrell, Kleist, and Reimer, a force to be reckoned with as Mangum serves it up. And Herho to Jesus, Kleist. Blocked there by the Bears. That was Jordan Roberts. Good block. And then a hit. Morrell, the block, kill combination. Yeah, it just feels like, you know, this is the fourth set we've had today. Obviously, it's a second match. But TMU just feels like they're on the, their heels. They're not able to, to get into it offensively. They, they, they're definitely playing on their heels. A point there for CIU. Substitutions coming as number 11, Katie Williams, enters the game. Last game, Katie Williams with nine kills. So she enters the front line for TMU. Jadea Morell mm. having a wonderful Saturday afternoon, puts it down and gives the Rams the 21 to 10 lead as Campo Soto enters the game. She will serve. Yeah, Morell's, Morell's involved in a lot of the offense today. Kleist with the attack there, sends it just long. Point for TMU as we have more substitutions. Macy Boggs back into the game. She will serve it for Truett McConnell. Nice. To Jesus to Kleist, Kessler not able to get to it. And substitutions, Nichols and Davis back into the game for Kleist and San Herho. Katie Nichols will serve it again. The freshman from Wilkesboro, North Carolina. Mangum is not able to handle that one from Katie Williams, Joe. As good as CIU is, obviously a national title team, and you expect that kind of stuff to be older players, right? And yes, you have a lot of seniors along the front line, but then you have, you know, Davis, who is just playing outstanding right now as a freshman. You know, and then you've got your libero, who's a freshman. You know, this team, they've got a lot of star players that are freshmen. So just because they're more of a veteran team doesn't mean they're going to lose when these seniors graduate. But, you, you know, that's the nice part of this program. You've got 12 girls on the bench. <laughs> Who are, are who are, are going to develop and play better next year and come in and take some of these spots? And so you're able to bring some of these young girls along, but it's impressive to watch freshmen play so well on a college uh, campus. And we talked about it in game number one about the culture that Amber Haver has created here at CIU about girls from all over the world now clamoring to be able to play volleyball at such a prestigious university and for, for such a successful coach and to be able to be ranked in the top 25 in the NAIA. We'll talk more about those rankings that will be coming out here later on in the broadcast. The Jesus sends it over. Wow. Wow. Back-to-back -back hits. Williams and Neal for TMU.
Mangum was able to dig that first one out there, Joe, but uh, not able to get a handle on that one from Neal. That thing was moving. Substitutions coming here for CIU. It's number one, Carla Couchy coming into the game for Morrell. Yeah, when they've had opportunities, TMU, they've been able to hit it down. It's just they haven't had many opportunities because they've been playing so much defense. Have a stoppage in play here. The referees, the down official talking to the group at the scores table. This obviously is a rotation question. Wondering if somebody is out of rotation on CIU. And as they're discussing that, we were talking about just the worldwide influence that Amber Haver is having on this CIU volleyball roster. Carla Couchy, who just checked into the game, she's all the way from France. We have folks, girls from uh, Puerto Rico, Costa Rica, Brazil, Poland, Colombia, Bogota, Colombia, Puerto Rico, all over the world, and also the state of South Carolina, extremely well represented as well. Very diverse roster that Coach Haver has put together. As this discussion about the rotation continues. It's, I would imagine it's more of a libero question because the libero can come on and off the court without checking in, and so sometimes they run in real quick and either the scorekeeper misses it, and so they get the scorekeeper is actually wrong, while other times the libero may have run, run in the wrong spot. So coach looks like she's going to bring – Morell back in and push the girls back one rotation, maybe. But the libero is saying they must have missed. So the libero, libero is trying to say, like, she ran onto the court and the scorekeepers, because on the scorer's table, there is a person who literally their job is to track only the libero. They don't keep score. They don't do. They don't keep stats. They literally are only tracking who the libero is going in and out of for. And so, in this situation, it looks like they may have, either they may have missed uh, one time that the libero ran in, or the libero ran in at the wrong spot. And so, if this does prove to be a rotation issue on the team, not the scorekeeper, that is point deductions but and what would that point deduction or deductions be Joe I think it's a if they got a point on that one they lose that point you know that basically that that score comes off the board and then you lose a point in addition to that I believe is how it is so we'll have to just wait and see because if he blames it on the scorekeeper and not the bench, then you can't take any points away for the scorekeeper getting it wrong, which is what I think Coach has been pushing here. So the score currently is 24-13 here in the first set of game number two. Again, the non-conference game in today's doubleheader. So the referee just went over and told the TMU coach what the situation was. Now he's letting their subs come in, and it looks like we're no harm, no foul. It looks like we're back to exactly what we thought we were. And it's set point. So everything checks out. Sonia Selecki will serve for Truett McConnell. They trail 24-13 here in set number one. And it's over with Davis, who just dominated this game. This game, to me, was all Davis, as she had five kills on seven attempts. I believe that might have been kill number six. Six. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so she just uh, she just dominated this game. This game was, uh, was led by Davis by far. So 25 to 13, the winner. That's... Set number one of, once again, this is a best of five. That's Hadassah Davis, the freshman, freshman as you mentioned, out of Woodstock, Georgia, the King's Academy. She was stellar 
has been stellar all day, but was stellar there in set number one in game number two here at the Moore Fitness Center. We mentioned earlier, just a minute ago, about those rankings. The last poll in the NAIA coaches poll that came out October 12th, the Columbia International University Rams checked in at number 25. And Joe, we did some quick math during our break and realized that the Rams have reeled off 19 out of their last 20, won 19 of their last 20 matches. Mm -hmm. So you got to believe that the Columbia International University Rams will move up and move up a good bit Yeah, because rankings. Since the last time these rankings came out, they also beat Bryan, which was ahead of them in the conference, no longer ahead of them in the conference. But So you had that win, you had the wins this during the week, and then plus today's win. And you got to believe when the new poll comes out on Wednesday that CIU will be moving up the national top 25 rankings. And going back to September 7th, and again, you can look at the CIU Rams schedule at CIURams.com. But, Joe, looking at these matches since September 7th, a 3-0 win, 3-1 win, 3-0, 3-2, then a, a sweep, a sweep, a sweep, a sweep. Yep. It's it's just been it's been pure domination yeah. by the CIU Rams, and, and that's been on display today. Yeah, and, and that should play a role. You know, these are coaches' polls, these are, and th these coaches aren't seeing all of these games. So they look at that, too, and they go, okay, well, they're not just winning three games to two. They're winning three games to none every time they go out on the floor. And so that should play a role when these coaches get together to put out the next rankings on Wednesday to be able to say CIU is dominating right now. They're on a streak. They need to move up these national rankings. And I'm sure they will. They will. And these coaches, they do have the opportunity to watch some, you know, just dare I say, some pretty good coverage here on the CIU Sports Network. Alex and Corbin are in the truck powering our broadcast today. Joe Pollock with me, Brian Rosefield. We're glad to be with you calling great volleyball action here at the Moore Fitness Center. Again, if you are just tuning in, we want to hear from you on the chat. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And if you've already checked in with us on where you're from, let us know what's going on. What's the weather like? What you maybe had for breakfast, what's for lunch? <laughs> What are you bringing us for dinner? Just kidding. Just let us know what's going on in your world. We'd love to interact with you while we're watching some volleyball here at Columbia International University. Brian, I know you don't have much to do during the week, so did you get to the State Fair? I, Joe Pollock, I am so disappointed. I have not been to the State Fair yet. No? it's Well, tomorrow is the last day, and... You know, you're going out on your yacht, I think, tomorrow, so you probably <laughs> yeah. won't get an opportunity I to. wish to I had a yacht. One day. <laughs> That's a yet. That is a yet. The, the power of the word yet. <laughs> but uh, as we talked about last week, the South Carolina State Fair, what a wonderful organization. They do a lot of great things for the state here, and they get a lot of my money, usually in the form of quarters, as I am loving feeding the goats <laughs> at the petting zoo. I mean, Joe Pollock, for me, there is not much more than a petting zoo. I thought you were going to say the little uh, bottle cap thing where you flip the quarters and you try to get it in the top of a, a, a like a one of the old soda bottles. Right. I thought that's what you were going to say is that you would flip all your all your change into there. I would rather my change go to power the goats and dare I say the Rams <laughs> at the South Carolina State Fair. <laughs> Where's Brian Byers? If he's if he's still with us this afternoon, that was my lame attempt at your. Uh, You're uh, what was it? A chauffeur? Chauffeur? So far? I, I would not call it a lame attempt. I thought that was right oh, okay. on point. <laughs> the puns, the puns are abounding here, Joe Pollock. Uh, here at the Moore Fitness Center, as we get ready for set number two action. I will say, Brian, I, when yesterday Brian sent, I, I sent Brian a text that said we're all set for our broadcast, and he thought that was a great pun. <laughs> and I had I had to tell him I had to be honest and say uh, that was an accident. Uh, I I I am a dad and I have some terrible dad jokes, but I am not a pun guy. I don't do a lot of puns like that on purpose. You could have fooled me, Joe Pollock. <laughs> you could have fooled me. 
Camelia De Jesus to serve for the Rams. And to Camelia's parents are watching from Tampa, Florida. Oh, welcome in from Tampa. Thank you for tuning in here on the CIU Sports Network. Tell a friend. Let everybody know all of the great things that are going on here. Nice, dig. CIU and CIU Volleyball. Mangum to Reimer. Reimer puts it down. That is her seventh kill. Our production guy's working double duty right now. San Herho with the serve. That one's out. That was Rachel Kessler on the attack. She sends it just wide. That will be another point for CIU. San Herho that time without the jump serve. This time she looks like she's going to be teeing it up for a jump serve as the Rams lead 2-1 to one early. Wow. There's some power and speed behind those serves. And that's good. Feist puts it down as that was Vanessa Johnson, the freshman from Cartersville, Georgia, into the game for the first time for Truett McConnell. But the Rams are able to send it back over, and they lead 3-1 to one here in set number two. That serve from San Herho is so hard to handle, and the Bears are unable to corral it in that time. Another point for CIU. Ooh, oh. I believe that was the right call from the line judge. San Herho just misses that line. That was close, that was close. Substitutions for Truett McConnell. Number two, Virginia Hudson, the junior out of St. Augustine, Florida, checks a, into the game. It's a nice area. Have you ever been to St. Augustine? I, Joe, I am embarrassed that I've never been to St. Augustine as Lydia Gustafson, the sophomore from Elgin, South Carolina, puts it down for the Rams. Tell me about St. Augustine, I can't Florida. say that I've been there that much. I, I, I drove through it one afternoon. And I did park and walk to the beach so I could say I was on the beach in St. Augustine. And it was beautiful. There's Kessler with the kill. I've heard great things, Joe. I feel like there's a lot of history down there at St. Augustine that I probably learned at some point and have more than likely definitely forgotten. A1A Highway. Remember that song? What was it? Was it um, Vanilla Ice or something? Who sang A1A? I do believe that is and, a... Uh, <laughs> I remember driving on A1A Avenue, or, A, or I don't even know what, is it A1A Avenue or A1A? And I was like, wow, I'm driving on the road he was singing about. And then, <laughs> and the houses that are on A1A, literally their front yard is A1A, and yeah. their backyard is the ocean. Wow. It uh, sounds like a nice way to live life as Marrero serves it up for the Rams, sends it just long. Rams leading 6-4 to four here in set number two. Joe, are you more of a mountains kind of guy or a beach kind of guy? Definitely mountain. Mountains and lake. Absolutely. I, I do not like the sand that comes with the beach <laughs> or the salt water. The block there from De Jesus as Nichols and Davis check in for Kleist and San Herho. Nichols will step back to serve for CIU as they lead 7-4. to four. That's the thing about South Carolina is Katie Williamson sends it just long on the attack. South Carolina, honestly, has it all. We're not being paid by Discover SC. No. But South Carolina with unbelievable mountains in the upstate and great beaches down on the coast. Well, that's what I love about Columbia. I had a friends from New Jersey come down last summer. They were looking to move here, and they said, why do you like it here? And I said, because I'm 90 minutes to the ocean, 90 minutes to the mountains, 90 minutes to the big city. You know, you, can, you you got a little bit of everything. So, and then plus Lake Murray. So you got a little bit of beach life while living in the middle of the state. That's why Morrell sends it over, another point for CIU. And yeah, you talk about the big city up there in Charlotte, about 90 minutes from there. 
and Columbia with a lot of good things going on in Columbia too. It's a it's not a big city by any stretch of the imagination, but tons to do, tons going on, tons of festivals. I feel like Columbia, South Carolina might be the festival capital of the world. Feels like every weekend when the weather starts warming up, there's something to do on a weekend. So again, another great reason that Amber Haver has been able to form a very powerful roster here, pulling girls from all over the world to Columbia, South Carolina. I'm actually emceeing a festival on Tuesday. The Lexington County Police Department is having a fall festival. That's very cool. And I'm emceeing the children's con the costume contest, I believe. Wow, how about that? Yeah. That should be fun. What's the hot costume this year, the popular costume? My daughter is actually this evening headed to a, a costume pa party. And she was being, um, forgive me, I'm terrible with uh, this kind of stuff. Uh, the Adams family. Uh -huh. Is it Wendy? Is it Wendy Adams? She was being one of the Adams. She put on this black dress and she had black boots and she had. It, and she pulled out the picture and said, "Look, does this look good?" I said, "You look just <laughs> like her." It was pretty amazing. That attack that time from number eleven, Katie Williams, sails long. Rams lead, thirteen to five here in set number two. Shanghai, China, checking in. Shanghai, China, thank you very much for checking in to the CIU Sports Network. As CIU, Columbia International University, taking care of business here against Truett McConnell. Oh, oh. I love those type of efforts where you guys or gals just stick their hand out. And, you know, it. It's a good reaction. They're just sticking their hand out because it's the reaction, but they can't do much with it, and it ricochets up and over the net sometimes. And that was Vanessa Johnson up there, very active for the Bears. Number 15, Emma Bolin serving. Oh, Davis again. She is getting up this afternoon. Oh, a little shocked on that hit. I thought they might call a double on that on CIU, but they let it play. Rams continuing to feed Hadassah Davis because why not? She puts it down for her seventh kill of the game number two, of this game number two. Camelia De Jesus will serve the Rams as they lead 14 to six. De Jesus there to dig it out. Mangum sets it up for Reimer. But Dunn is there for TMU. De Jesus to Reimer. It's blocked, but it falls right in the center of the court. That Rams logo. I don't know if you saw. I don't know if you saw that. So the TMU player, when the ball hit the ground, she spiked it back. She hit it in frustration down. It went under the net. The near side referee made notion to the head referee, like, do you want me to call that? And he shook his head no and let the play, uh, you know, let, let the lady continue. But that could have been a, I guess a, they call it a delay of game. And, um, but he decided to, to let her frustration go. We were talking about it off the air at the break, Joe, but it, it, it really has to be difficult to to come into the Moore Fitness Center against the nationally ranked CIU Rams, get defeated in game number one in a conference match, and then turn around and play a non-conference match. It still means a lot. Let's be honest, it still means a lot. But when things aren't going your way, and another ace there from San Jorge, well-timed. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's tough. Yeah, it's 17-7. And so CIU is on their way to winning their fifth straight set this afternoon against TMU. And so as a TMU player, you've got to be growing frustrated, right? Or you're going to get complacent. You know, you're going to get frustrated or complacent, and you don't want either. Um, so, but they're, they're, they're playing. They're hanging tough. They're doing their, what they can do. But CIU is just overpowering. Point there for Truett McConnell. 
Madison Dunn from Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Joe, and, and maybe you're not aware, but Oshkosh, Wisconsin, the home of the world famous Air Venture, which is a fly in, a massive fly in where general aviation pilots fly in from all over, honestly, the world for a week. Sponsored by the EAA, the Experimental Aircraft Association. Yes, folks, we're talking about airplanes <laughs> here on this broadcast as the Rams with another point, 19 to 11. But it is worth the Google to see how many airplanes are landing at Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And watching planes take off and land there, it's, it's unbelievable. Brian knows some strange random facts. <laughs> I bet that's going to be a Jeopardy answer someday. <laughs> and now you know it because you listened to the CIU Sports Network. Sonia Selecki there with the kill. Brings Truett McConnell in double digits here in set number two. But they still trail 18 to 11. The Jesus to Kleist but it's handled by the Bears. And that attack from Rachel Kessler falls just long. That makes it 19 to 10 for the Rams. Carla Couchy again all the way from Flance checking in for Kira Reimer. Couchy the senior, 5'7". We'll serve it up. Paris. Kleist and Morrell, extremely active up front. Kleist Ooh. sends another one down. That is her sixth kill in this game number two. She was stellar in game number one with nine kills hitting at 350. Rams leading 20 to 10. I think you can sense it here in the gymnasium a little bit. It's... Ooh! The attack that time, I believe Ooh. that was number 11. Williams catches Couchy. I feel bad because TMU can't even celebrate. That was a fantastic hit. But they're going to check her. She, I, I don't know if you, if you didn't see, that spike went literally to her face. And so she is coming out to get checked. But I feel bad, TMU couldn't even celebrate that point because they stopped to make sure she was okay. But it was a stellar kill. It was. It was a very, very strong hit there. Couchy subs out. And that's the thing about competing hard. Things like that are going to happen. But Katie Williams, as she sent it down, her first move was, are you okay? Yeah. And, uh, a lot of respect for that from Katie Williams as the Rams lead 21 to 11. Well, as I was going to say before that, it feels in the gym like, I mean, it, it has been a one-sided affair today, right? They, CIU won three games to none. They're now up one game to none, about to go up two games to none. But in the first match this afternoon, the TMU bench was still very involved. They were dancing and cheering, and, and and right now they are very quiet. You know, they're not they're not dancing, they're not cheering, they're not singing. It's uh, the the mood has definitely changed on the TMU side. Adasa Davis sends it down as Gustafsson and Rojas check into the game. Rojas will be serving. She is from Puerto Rico. A lot of time spent on that one, Joe. Williams not able to handle it. The Rams take the 23-12 lead here in set number two. The trainers are checking in with the CIU coaching staff, presumably about Carla Couchy, as Rojas sends it over. 
That's Gustafsson. You know, it's one of those. Block. It's one of those things. Um, you, you've seen it if you watch the NFL. How much concussions has been involved in the NFL discussion this year? And so with that, you know, that CIU player gets hit in the face, and everybody goes immediately like, "Oh, okay, is she okay?" You know, whether it's a concussion or not, I don't know what kind of protocol they have, but she, you know, she went straight to the side to get checked. And that's always you want to be conservative with that kind of stuff to make sure that she's she's all set. Point there for Truett McConnell. It's now 24-13. CIU leading here in set number two. Davis again has absolutely been unstoppable. That is her ninth kill here in game number two as CIU takes set number two, leading 2-0 in game number two. Joe, I have said the number two a lot <laughs> in the last about 20 seconds. Well, they win set one and set two by a score of 25-13. to 13. So that's five straight sets this afternoon for CIU. And Katie Williams checking in with Coach Aver just to check on number one, Carla Couchy. Again, a lot of respect for that young lady there. She's had a heck of an afternoon. She's at four kills here in game number two. And again, finished with nine kills in game number one. But she's a competitor, and she is concerned about Carla Couchy. DJ Scotty Grigsby. I'm going to need to check with him, Joe Pollock, after this game to see what. Uh, if, first of all, is he using Spotify? Is it Pandora? Is it Apple Music? Is it something else? But the the mixture of music today, it's it's been dare I say world class. Well, you know they are the national champs, so you got to bring you got to bring it in all aspects. It's not just national championships on the floor. It's the program is a national title, so whether it's the broadcasters or the uh, the water boy or whoever, it's everybody is a national champion. We are here in the Moore Fitness Center. Have just completed two sets. CIU and Truett McConnell are locked in a doubleheader. We have played five sets. CIU has taken all five. Going back to game one by scores of 25 to 13, 25 to 14, 25 to 19, and here in game number two, 25 13 and 25 13. The Rams, we've talked about it most of the afternoon, have looked dominant and expect them to do that as we move forward today and the rest of the season as we look ahead to postseason play coming up here soon. And as we look ahead, looks like they're off until Friday. The Rams will travel next weekend, Friday at Bluefield College. That'll be a Friday night tilt at 6.30. And then they will turn around and play Shawnee State University on Saturday at 11 a.m. at Kentucky Christian. And then play Kentucky Christian University at 1 p.m. next weekend. And then they will return back home on November the 1st for a doubleheader. That's a Tuesday against St. Andrews University and Toccoa Falls College. College athletics, Joe Pollock, at any level, it's busy. Mm -hmm. Traveling the country. The volleyball has the, the, the benefit of they play a lot of these tri-matches and doubleheaders and things which does 
help when you're traveling, you know, from here to Kentucky to play. If you can, if you can kill two birds with one stone and, and knock out a couple of matches, it's going to help everybody. That's right. We are getting ready for set three action here at the Moore Fitness Center. Will be Truett McConnell to serve first and Emma Bolin. We mentioned earlier the 5'7 freshman from League City, Texas. Joe, I was in Texas a couple of times this summer. She sends that one into the net. I like my time in Texas, Joe. I'll be honest with you. I ate some food that, I'll be honest, did not even know existed. I ate, uh, <laughs> I believe it was called an Orex, which is an, I, I just don't, yeah. I know some things about aviation. I don't know much about Texas cuisine. Can't say anything about it. <laughs> I've, uh, I drove to San Diego across the country and we had dinner in Amar Amarillo and that was about the most I've experienced of Texas. The Jesus not able to handle that one. That will tie it up one apiece here in set number three, Amarillo. I feel like there's a country song in there somewhere. Is that a George Strait song? Oh, yes, it is. My, I, I, and believe me, I, I sang it more than an, anybody in the car appreciated uh, <laughs> when every time we drove through Amarillo on the way across country. Oh, George Strait, the legend, singing Amarillo by morning. We'll put in our request to DJ Scotty Grigsby to see if we can get some Amarillo by morning <laughs> here at the Moore Fitness Center. <laughs> uh, not really the pump-up kind of song. I don't think we're going to hear it, Joe. And <laughs> I don't believe any of our viewers want to hear you or I sing it. So we're going to leave it alone as Kleist sends it over. It's handled by Williams over to Selecki, who puts it down right in front of the line, Judge. That knots it at two here in set number three. I'd like to be asked back to do this, so I will not sing. Okay. I may dance, but I will not sing. I wonder if these line judges are uh, getting a workout. They do a lot of uh, they do a lot of squats when they make these calls. They get down and into that call. They don't just uh, wave the flag. Oof. Appreciate the work of the officials here at the collegiate level. I'm involved in some high school athletics. We enjoy and appreciate everything that our officials do as Williams sends it into the net. The Rams take the 3-2 lead. It is not an easy job being a referee of any sport at any level. But we appreciate you. We need you to be able to play the games that we love to watch. Rojas back to serve for the Rams. As a ball comes back onto the floor, we'll serve that one again from Rojas. So I found out it's not a kid who's kicking the ball. They have volunteers who are on either end of the floor, and when one of those volunteers gets both of the balls, they have to roll the ball the length of the floor to the other volunteer. I'll tell you, that that's like a fair game, like a county fair, the state fair. You know when you got to roll those – you got to putt it that far or whatever. They're trying to roll the ball all the way the length of the gym without it curving onto the court. And so twice today it has hit the bleachers and then come out. So here we go again. We'll have to get our camera guys to um, to watch the, the rolling of the balls on the sideline. Not an easy job here. We appreciate those volunteers as well. As the point before, De Jesus with an incredibly athletic play with the block. There's the ball. It's being ro rolled across the court. It's at the top part of the camera if you can see that far. I'm entertained by that portion of the volunteers. That was San Herho from the back row. Do you think you could roll the volleyball from the length of the court, Brian, without without it was straight? You know, without it without it hooking. I feel like I feel like I could now. However, uh, this is a, it's a lot of pressure. That this is, is a that, long that, way. That's a this is we're at a college, um, uh, obviously a, a, a college floor here. So it's a 94 foot basketball floor. These gentlemen are rolling it probably a good 110 feet. And with a, with a little bit of pressure. Okay, here we go. Let's watch this again. Look at the top of the screen. 
From your and left. From the left. He's rolling it to the right. And that was a very good roll. That was effective. Right between the feet there as Nichols can't quite get it over the net. That makes it 6-4 to four CIU leading here in the third set. We have substitutions for Truett McConnell. That's Kaylee McFarland and Jordan Roberts into the game. Roberts will serve as the Bears trail 6-4. to four. Rojas handles to DeJesus to Davis who Ooh. finds another open spot. Hadassah Davis with her 11th kill. She is leaving no doubt here in game number two. Yep. Dayton Valance checks into the game, replacing Jadea Morrell. She'll serve it up, handled by Williams. To Selecki, back to Williams. Block at the front there for CIU. Nice. Davis again able to angle it and find an opening for her 12th kill. The player that was hit in the face, we have uh, some people online asking for an update. Has she entered the game, re-entered the game since then? Carla Couchy has not re-entered the game. We appreciate you interacting with us, by the way. Um, she has not re-entered the game. She is up and about behind the CIU bench. Looks like she's in good spirits. We are not sure if she will re-enter the game or not, but we appreciate the question. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Sports Center, where are you? We want to see that one on Sports Center tonight. Somebody tag that one and send it to ESPN to Jesus with the incredibly athletic play. Another point for CIU. Balance to, to serve again, sends it just long. Substitutions as Mangum re enters the game for Balance. And Katie Williamson enters the game for TMU. Replaces Rachel Kessler and Williams to serve it. Scutchings. Continue to feed Davis. And the push attempt there from Katie Williamson from Carrollton, Georgia, falls just outside out of bounds. Kira Reimer back into the game for Lexabel Rojas. And I feel like we keep saying it, Joe Pollock, but the front line here now of Davis, Scutchings, and Reimer, that's a force to be reckoned with. Mm. Offensively and defensively. Uh, that's, the, that's the best part of watching this. It's, they're not just hitters. They defend very well. And that, that athleticism, that height at the net, backed up by another dig by Kelsey Mangum, makes it it's virtually impossible to get anything going against this Columbia International University squad. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they've just been on today. They've been very effective in every aspect, whether it's service, whether it's passing, hitting, Goodness gracious, Kelsey Mangum to Jesus to Davis, who puts it down once again. Kill number 13. To Jesus to serve it again, but not before another Truett McConnell timeout. Mark Corbin calls a timeout. Needs to talk to his girls, figure out if they can get anything going here as Columbia International University up 12 to five here in set number three of game number two at the Moore Fitness Center. Carla Couchy is, like you said, she's on, the, she's on the bench, she's doing everything that the other players on the bench are doing. So she's, so she's uh, definitely involved, but she just has not re-entered the game since she was hit in the face earlier. We've talked a lot about the exceptional recruiting by Amber Haver, but she's very clear about what she's looking for in the next 
the next group of CIU Rams, obviously high academic, excellent student, high character, moral, high integrity, a great attitude, somebody that's just coachable. And then athletics, they put 100% effort into every practice. If you're interested, <laughs> like I said earlier, follow CIU Volleyball on Instagram. Reach out because this squad is up and coming. They've already been up and coming again as we talked about a national championship in the NCCAA last year. But they're not going anywhere. They're not one and done. They're not going to win a title and fall off with all their players gra graduating. They have seniors and they have a significant amount of freshmen who are putting in a lot of activity. have a violation on that serve. We are efforting what the violation was. But it's a point for Truett McConnell. And substitution. Emma Bolin back into the game for Macy Boggs. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what that was also. I don't know if he was claiming somebody was out of rotation or in the wrong spot. Point for CIU there as Alana Sanjurjo from Bayamon, Puerto Rico will serve it up for the Rams. Point goes to Truett McConnell. It's now a 13 to seven. Rams leading here in set number three. Back to serve will be Madison Dunn. Oh, that's a good dig by TMU. Dunn there saved by Ooh. Abby Kleist. Goodness gracious. Kill number seven as more substitutions here as Morrell enters the game. Reimer, Kleiss, Morrell, Sanjurjo, De Jesus, and Mangum on the floor for CIU. Mangum to serve. Selecki blocked by Reimer and Morrell. Oh, San look at that. Sanjurjo again. That left hand as she's diving, keeps it in play. The defensive effort right here by CIU is so impressive. The Jesus sends it long. Oh, that's a great cut. Cutter from Katie Williamson, the junior from Carrollton, Georgia. Puts it right in front of the up official. That was a great cut. That's her fourth kill here in game number two. The double block was there in front of her, and she just went hard left. Kessler serves it up. It's received by Mangum. Great block there by Truett McConnell. Wow. San Herho. With the dig over to Kleist, who sends it just long. Rams leading 14 to 9 here. Troop McConnell not able to handle that one from Abby Kleist. Block falls out of bounds. Lexabel Rojas back into the game. She'll serve it up. I'm not sure that was a block, but the referees said it was. So the play continues. Kleist over the outstretched arms and hands of Vanessa Johnson and Sonia Selecki. Not much they can do. With that one, Rojas to serve again. Oh, 
That's another great cut. The line judge calls that one out of bounds from Katie Williams. That makes it 17 to nine, CIU. So there's a Katie Williams and a Katie Williamson on TMU. That is correct. Okay. I don't know why, but it took me six games to figure that out. <laughs> And I hope that we have not mixed those up, but number 18, Vanessa Johnson into the net for Truett McConnell. Another point for CIU. They lead now 18 to nine. Carla Couchy's mom is checking in, wondering how she's doing. And all we can tell you is that she's up cheering and dancing on the sideline. So she seems fine. She's just not gonna re-enter the game. I would. Uh, Highly doubt she'll be back in the game, but she is over here leading the charge, leading the chance for the CIU Rams as they are up 19 to nine here in set number three of game number two. That's twice there with the block. Makes it 20 to nine. Mark Corbin calls another timeout. Rams lead 20 to nine here in set number three. Quick check of the stats. It's no surprise that Hadassah Davis is leading the Rams with 13 kills here in game number two. Kira Reimer with 11. Abby Kleist with nine. Morrell with six. And Scutchings with two here in game number two. Katie Williams with four kills. For Truett McConnell, Jordan Roberts, Sonia Selecki with three each. Camelia De Jesus and Alana Sanjurjo each have seven kills. Kelsey Mangum with, excuse me, with seven digs. 13 digs for Kelsey Mangum here in game number two. The defensive effort, as Joe Pollock has mentioned, for CIU has been astounding. We were running out of adjectives, really, to be honest with you. We are, uh, we're trying to show you Carla Tauchi. She's over there on the sideline somewhere, but we wanted to just acknowledge that she is up. She seems okay. So no worries, Mom. She's doing all right. Morell with the attack. To Jesus as well. Abby Kleist, kill number 10. Okay, Brian. We will uh, set one and two, we're 25-13. Okay, there's, we're four points away from a victory or four points away from 13 again. So is it gonna be three straight sets of 25-13? We will find out here on the CIU Sports Network. Truett McConnell keeps it in play. Rojas with the save over her head, gets it to Kleist. And Katie Williams not able to get that one down. My apologies, the point goes to Truett McConnell. Maybe we missed the violation there here, Joe, because that ball looked like it was out of bounds. But either way, it's 21 to 10. Yeah, that one got everybody. We got the scorekeeper, got our video guy. We all, uh, we all missed that one. Point there goes to CIU. It's now 22 to 10. Katie Nichols to serve it up for CIU. Morell and Davis with the block over to Davis. Beautiful dig there by Madison Dunn. Man, Davis is fun to watch. 
and a freshman. So she's got many more years of doing this. And she is fun to watch when she gets when she gets jumping. Davis again. Rachel Kessler not able to handle it. Well, here we go, match point. Katie Nichols to serve it with the Rams up 24 to 10. And that will do it. Columbia International University makes it a sweep of both games in today's doubleheader against Truett McConnell, winning both games 3-0. Impressive effort, impressive execution today from CIU, Joe. What did you see? Absolutely. Uh, I think offensively they played extremely well. And that offense led to them not having to be doing much defensively. Yes, they had their blocks and such, but their offense was so overpowering that TMU had a lot of free balls that they were bringing back, where it wasn't a lot of uh, it wasn't a lot of hits that were having to go through. So, CIU with an impressive afternoon, two matches, two victories, and they should see that move to them up the rankings as it comes out on Wednesday. And again, as we mentioned last weekend, one of the great post-game traditions here at Columbia International University. We're going to pause here for the after-match prayer. We'll be back with you in a moment. And that will do it here from the Moore Fitness Center. Again, the Rams will be on the road this coming weekend at Bluefield College in Virginia, and then they will travel to Kentucky Christian for a doubleheader on Saturday. For full stats and a full rundown, visit CIURams.com, and make sure to check out CIU Volleyball on Instagram. For everybody here at the CIU Sports Network, Corbin, Alex, and my broadcast partner, Joe Pollock, I'm Brian Rosefield. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.